Hebrews 11.1, 1, King James. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, understand, your faith is the evidence. Is that what it says right there? Your faith is the evidence of things that are not seen, but it's things that you hope for. Now, understand, until you have the thing, you're still hoping. Okay? So when you see it in the Word of God, seeing it in the Word of God, and sometimes hearing testimonies, things like that, it's always good. But when you see it in the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you hear the Word of God, faith is present. But now notice, what does faith, what does the Word of God do? The Word of God produces hope. Why? Because it shows you what's possible in God. You read in there and it says, by his stripes you were healed. So you go, oh, I can be healed. That's hope. Right there, that's hope. Now, then you have to take it from hope and say, you know what? By his stripes, I am healed. And I believe that what he said is true. Why? Because I believe he is true. He's faithful. So therefore, it must be true. So therefore, by his stripes, I am healed. Now, at that point, you, now you have entered into faith. So you had to go from hope to faith. Hope is always future. This is why many people don't receive healing on their own. Why? They think they're in faith and they're simply in hope. Hope doesn't heal. Do you get that? You say, wait a minute, how, how are they in hope and not faith? Uh, because you listen to them and they talk and they'll say, yeah, uh, God's going to heal me. Okay, that's hope. Why? Because it's future. Faith is now. Do you get that? Faith acknowledges what God has already done. Right? Faith is always past tense. If you ever talk to a person in faith, it'll always be in the past tense, right? Now, understand, it's sometimes when you're talking with people, yes, you talk about a present tense thing of, of what's happening right there. But if you're in faith, it has to be past tense that it's already accomplished, already done, right? Now, so, and it says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance. Now, notice, faith is the substance, okay? It's evidence. And it's the substance. So it is the substance, okay, of the things hoped for. And it, in other words, it is what causes your hope to come into being, right? Now, it, it's amazing now, especially with quantum physics and stuff. Uh, and there's some, some pretty good material out there on quantum physics from a Christian viewpoint. Because everything about what scientists understand, how the earth was uh, created and all that kind of stuff, uh, is right here in Hebrews 11. Every bit of it. He even talks about how the worlds were framed by the Word of God. We're not going to go into all that today. But it is amazing because now scientists understand that there are atomic and subatomic particles that you cannot see, but they're real. And, and you can't see them, so they are the things that are not seen, the things that are invisible. And the things that were made, now think about this, everything in here was made by something invisible. Now, this is amazing because when you think about it, what God did and man has learned and copied him in a, in a way we could even say by manipulating things. But God took all of these subatomic particles and then atomic particles and you can't see them. But it, then it, the amazing thing was he takes all this stuff and it's framed See, if you're going to lay concrete, you have to first build a frame or the concrete will just spread everywhere, right? But you build, you frame what you want. And so you build a frame and then you put the concrete in it and the concrete takes the shape of the frame, right? Now, it's amazing because what God did was with his words, he framed what he wanted all the subatomic and atomic particles to form into. So he made statements, spoke, and he framed the world and everything in it, basically. And once he had the frame, now he took all of those subatomic particles and gathered them all up. And the amazing thing is, when they're all scattered out, you can't see them. But when you gather them all up and put them in the, inside the frame, you see it. So the invisible becomes visible. Right? Now that's how the world was framed. And that's how it was made, essentially. God spoke, 
And people say, well, what about the Big Bang Theory? That's what I'm telling you. God spoke, and bang, it happened. <laughs> That's the way it works, right? So, now, and he framed it. In other words, he, ca- he knows the end from the beginning. And he calls those things which be not as though they were. So he speaks these things as all they're already existent. And when he speaks, his words cause all these subatomic atomic particles to start to form together to shape the picture in his mind of what the, his word said. Now, we are created in his likeness and image. We do the same thing. That's what we do. Just most people use it in the negative. Well, here's what's going to happen. You know, it'll be this way. It always is every time. Isn't it? And then they tell some negative thing. And then when it happens, they go, see, I told you. It's like, yeah, we heard you. We heard you use Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24 wrongly, but you used it, and guess what? You proved it worked, right? So, now, so Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Notice it doesn't say faith and feelings, or faith and appearance. It doesn't say that. Then, now, in the literal Greek, it, it says it very similarly, But what it says, now faith, now get this, now faith is the title deed of things hoped for. Faith is the title deed. The proof of things which are not being seen. Now that's a more of a literal translation from the Greek. Notice though, your faith gives you, and your faith, I'm not going to say it gives you, it is the title deed. When you have faith, That's your title that you own that thing. 